So today we're going to look at some gaming benchmarks, which is something I don't normally do, but the reason why I wanted to do this is because I was really curious how good the performance actually is on this distro called Catchy OS, which recently came to my attention a few months ago after several viewers mentioned it in my previous Linux videos, and it's currently sitting at number one on DistroWatch over the last one month. Catchy OS is based on Arch Linux, but comes with quite a few modifications and optimizations which are meant to boost performance. It also comes with customized installers for various applications, including one for gaming which provides a customized version of Proton. There's been a lot of hype around this distro lately, so I decided to put it to the test on several games and compare performance to a few other distros, including Endeavor OS, Kubuntu, and Windows 10. Now the reason why I chose Endeavor OS is because that's my main distro on my daily driver. Endeavor OS is also based on Arch but provides a more vanilla Arch experience. So I wanted to see how it compared to Catchy OS and if it was worth it or not to switch. And while I was at it, I also decided to throw in Kubuntu since Ubuntu based distros are the most popular flavor of Linux. And to make things really interesting, I also included Windows 10 in the mix as well. But before we get into it, let me first tell you about today's sponsor. Whether you're a large company or just a DIY creator at home, JLC PCB can help bring your creations to life. Not only do they offer excellent PCB manufacturing and assembly, they also offer 3D printing services, CNC machining, and they even sell mechatronics parts now, which is something I'm really excited about for my future projects. I've personally used JLC PCB a number of times for my PCB prototypes and I've always been very happy with the results. And the ordering process is super simple. All I need to do is use KiCad's fabrication toolkit to export the files for my design, upload the gerber file to the ordering page, and then select the quantity and other details in their easy to use menus. And if I need my boards to be fully assembled, then all I need to do is upload two more files and their automated systems handle the rest. And in addition to all this, their services are also incredibly affordable. Overall, I think you'll be impressed with what JLC PCB has to offer, so be sure to check them out through the link provided down below. Alright, so as far as games go, I actually haven't purchased a new game for a while now since I already have a bunch of older games on my backlog, so the games I chose to bench are slightly older. I'll be doing Batman Arkham Knight, Horizon Zero Dawn, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, and Civilization VI. I know 4 games isn't a whole lot, but either way I think the results still give good insight into performance. Now let's quickly go over some details about the test system starting with its specs. All of the tests today were done on my custom built PC with a Ryzen 5900X, a Gigabyte X570S Gaming X motherboard, 64GB of DDR4-3600 CL18 RAM, and a Radeon RX 6600. I do also have an RTX 3060 in another system, but I won't be testing that. Now, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you might remember I also had an RX 6700 XT. However, that card developed an issue where it would only run at PCIe X8 speeds instead of X16. Fortunately, XFX replaced it under RMA with a brand new one. But I decided to sell it since I was never really happy with this particular model's cooling performance and the card always ran hot even after doing a repaste. So for right now I'm stuck with this 6600 since the GPU market is pretty crappy at the moment and I don't feel like spending over seven or $800 on a new RX 9070. And like I said, I have a lot of games that are five to 10 years old that I still need to play and the 6600 can handle these perfectly fine at 1440p. And at 1080p, it's actually fast enough to create a CPU bottleneck in the games that I tested. To be clear, there still are some scenes at 1080p where the game becomes GPU bottlenecked, but there are also quite a few other scenes that do experience a CPU bottleneck. So 1080p will still give us an idea of how performance varies with a CPU bottleneck. And of course, when running the benchmarks at 1440p, those results will be purely GPU bottleneck scenarios. 
Now really quickly, here are a few more details about the operating systems that I'm testing. When it comes to Proton, I used Proton Experimental for both Endeavor OS and Kubuntu. But it's important to note that Ketchy OS has its own customized version of Proton. Ketchy OS also has a customized kernel along with additional ones that you can switch to, but for today I'll only be testing its default kernel. Also, something else I should point out is that both Ketchy OS and Endeavor OS come with Wayland by default, while Kubuntu still comes with X11 by default. Even though it's easy to install Wayland on Kubuntu, I decided to stick with the default settings. And one last thing I should mention is that all of the game footage you're seeing was recorded after collecting the data from the benchmarks. This footage was captured using the RX 6600's video encoder, which performed extremely well without any slowdowns at 1440p and 60fps. Also, all the numbers you're about to see are from three separate runs which were averaged together, and then rounded to the nearest whole number. Alright, so let's start with Batman at 1080p. For this game, there's actually no clear winner. Windows does win the average frame rate with 187 FPS, but all the Linux distros are right behind it with averages in the 170s. Now what's interesting here is that Windows actually loses in both the minimums and the maximums. Catchy OS has a lead in the minimums at 117, but the other distros aren't far behind with Endeavor OS scoring 112 and Kubuntu scoring 107, which is also tied with Windows for last place. Now when it comes to maximums, Kubuntu actually comes out on top at 283, but the other systems aren't far behind. Now let's move on to 1440p. Here we see a very similar story when it comes to the average and maximum frame rates. Windows takes a small lead in the averages, but also happens to be in last place for the maximums. For the minimums, Windows loses against Ketchy OS and Kubuntu, which happen to be tied at 81. But it's interesting how Endeavor OS seemed to choke here, and ended up in last place. This could be due to a random variance, or perhaps there was a small regression in this particular driver version for this game. But now let's move on to Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p. Here we see Windows actually loses against all the Linux distros both in the averages and the maximums. Catchy OS manages to take the lead here with an average of 128, but Endeavor OS is just right behind it at 127, and Kubuntu is a few frames behind that at 123, and Windows is in last place with an average of 118. The maximums also follow the same trend as the averages. But when it comes to the minimums, Windows takes the lead with a score of 68, while all the Linux distros see a score in the mid-50s. Now if we look at the 1440p results, we see pretty much the exact same results. Both Ketchy OS and Endeavor OS are tied in the average at 84, with Kubuntu right behind them at 83, and Windows falling behind at 74. Now the maximums are interesting because Windows takes a hard loss here and is significantly behind the others. But when it comes to the minimums, we see the same story as before with Windows coming on top at 53, while all the Linux distros score right around 40 here. Overall I'd say Linux is the winner for this game. Even though Windows has better minimums, Linux has better averages and significantly better maximums. So now let's move on to Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which actually has a Linux native version of the game. But ironically, running the Windows version with Proton offers better results. So that's what's shown here. We can see Windows comes out ahead in every metric, but the difference is small. Windows scored 152 for the average, while Ketchy OS scored 145, Endeavor OS got 144, and Kubuntu with 142. We see the same pattern for both the maximum and minimum scores as well. Now when moving over to 1440p, we see the exact same trend as with 1080p. Windows does come out ahead here, but just barely. All of these results are basically within margin of error, and chances are you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between any of them. Now let's look at Civilization VI, which also has a Linux native version, but again, for some reason, the Windows version running through Proton provides a better experience. Go figure, it seems Valve really did a good job with Proton. 
But anyway, this benchmark is different than the others because it offers separate benchmarks for the CPU and GPU. Also, unlike the previous benchmarks which showed the FPS, this one shows the turn time in seconds for the CPU and the frame time in milliseconds for the GPU. So in other words, lower is better here. Let's start with the CPU scores. As you can see, Windows managed to squeeze out a win here while Kubuntu arrived in last place. But the difference between these is only around half a second. Both Catchy OS and Endeavor OS landed right in the middle at about 31.3 seconds. All these scores are extremely close and during actual gameplay you wouldn't be able to notice a difference. However, for the GPU benchmark, Windows landed in first place with a considerable lead at about 6.9 milliseconds. While Endeavor OS lagged behind at 8.3 milliseconds, Catchy OS right behind that at about 8.4 or 8.5, and Kubuntu came in last place with just under 9 milliseconds. It seems the Mesa drivers can use a little work on this particular title, but at the same time, Civilization is a turn-based game, so you don't really need the best frame rates in order to have an enjoyable experience with this game. Alright, so that's all the games I tested, but now let's look at a combined average chart starting with the 1080p results. These numbers combine the scores for the first three games I showed, but doesn't include Civilization since that one had two separate benchmarks. I know three games isn't very much, but it's still enough to provide some insight, and it seems to fall in line with other benchmarks from other sources. But anyway, here we can see the general trend. When it comes to minimum scores and averages, Windows barely managed to come out on top. But the difference between all four operating systems is so small that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. We can also see Catchy OS actually is faster than Endeavor OS, but again, the difference in average score is only 2 and the difference in minimums is only 3. It's definitely something, but again, the difference is so small that I personally don't think it's worth the hassle of switching. I've been happy with Endeavor OS for the past two or so years, so I'll probably be sticking with it. But if you're someone who's planning to do a fresh installation of Arch, then yeah, I think you should definitely consider Catchy OS. But keep in mind the other deciding factor which is stability. Like I mentioned in another video, sometimes highly customized distros that stray far away from vanilla tend to have worse stability and compatibility. This isn't always the case though, and it depends on a number of factors. But if you're someone who's currently using Catchy OS, then I'm really curious to hear about your thoughts and experience with it. So feel free to drop a comment if you agree or disagree with anything that I've said here. But now let's take a look at the combined average scores for 1440p. Here we can see mostly the same story as before, where Windows comes out ahead in the minimums and averages, but it's interesting how Windows fell behind considerably for the maximums. Even Kubuntu has a solid win ahead of Windows here. But something weird I noticed is that Endeavor OS actually fell behind Kubuntu in the minimums. Like I said earlier, this could simply be due to variants, or could be something weird going on with this specific setup. But the difference is minimal, so I don't think it's the big deal. So now for my final thoughts. When it comes to performance, it turns out it doesn't really matter which distro you go with. Even though Ubuntu uses older packages and software, it still delivers a similar level of performance as Arch. Like I said in a previous video, if you're new to Linux then I suggest starting with Kubuntu or any other Ubuntu based distro. I think they're the easiest to learn on because of the huge number of resources available online, and as you can see from these results, it still delivers excellent gaming performance. And then once you become more comfortable with Linux, then you can think about switching to an Arch or Fedora based distro if you want, or you can just stick with Ubuntu. However, there are two scenarios where you'll likely want to go with Arch or Fedora over Ubuntu. The first is if you have brand new hardware. For example, if you have an RX 9000 series GPU, then at the moment you'll probably want to go with a more cutting edge distro because they offer the newest drivers. If you tried to use an RX 9070 with Ubuntu right now, then chances are it won't work very well. 
you'll need to wait around maybe six months from now until the drivers in Ubuntu catch up and provide a good gaming experience for the 9070. And likewise, the other scenario where having the latest software can make a big difference is if you're someone who purchases games on day one of release. But other than that, Ubuntu should provide a similar experience with similar performance as we saw in today's results. But anyway, that wraps up today's video. Hopefully you guys found these benchmarks to be helpful if you were wondering how much better performance optimized distros actually are. It turns out the difference is really small, and it's probably not worth switching if you're already happy with the distro you're currently on. If you enjoyed the video then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, feel free to leave any thoughts or comments you have when it comes to gaming performance. I am curious to hear other people's experiences with various distros. Stay tuned for more Linux videos, but also check out my other videos if you're interested in learning computer and electrical engineering, working on robotics projects, and I also do DIY guitar gear as well. So there's lots of other cool stuff to check out on my channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.